Hi, I'm Ian, and welcome to Ghosts and Bears, the podcast where we tell you the actual ghost story with the actual history in the actual place. This week we're heading north, far north, northern BC, to the land of Terrace, BC, where we met up with Dan and a few of his friends who were on the site Ghost Hunters, and they shared with us some of the stories, all of them historical, all of them interesting, coming up on Ghosts and Bears. Thank you for joining us yet again. Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, it's been quite the uh, time up here. We are currently going through uh, a heat wave. So uh, in Canadian terms, that means 45 degrees Celsius, which our American friends would understand is around 110, or in other words, the boiling point of Canadians. So we are not used to this. We are struggling with it. It has been a burden, but I think we're just about to come out the other side. So that would be nice because currently to record this without noise, I have shut my door. And so I'm cut off from the blessed, blessed air conditioning. Um, so I, I want you to know the hardships I am suffering for you. Happy to do it, but just so you know. Um, yeah, uh, Jason and I had an amazing adventure. We went up to uh, Terrace, B.C., Terrace is about a 19-hour drive from Victoria, so it's certainly not somewhere you go, uh, you know, just on a whim. Uh, we were lucky enough that we got to fly up, so it wasn't quite as long. Uh, we were up there for a couple of days, and uh, Jason was doing some business stuff, and so we thought, while we're here, we should talk to some people who know the local ghosts, because why not kind of make it a little bit of a different episode than always Victoria. So that's what we did. We were uh, lucky enough, Jason made contact with Danny Nunes, um, who is a local ghost hunter. He also does, he has a YouTube channel and uh, all these other good things, and we'll talk about that. But we met with Danny and John, John Powell, who uh, does these investigations with him. And later on afterwards, uh, Walter came and joined us and took some pictures, which uh, I have posted some of those up as well. So pretty cool adventure i have to say and i was really surprised by the in-depth work these guys have done and some of the really crazy stories uh that they had to tell like yeah it was intense um they then after we did this uh we did our story time um they then took us to all the different locations and this is our first time using microphones which is why we did all the stories um at the hotel and then headed out to see the places. Uh, I think my favorite one, or the one that caught me the most, and it's just because I, I do love the history, was the one, it's a cabin that's in the Heritage Park in Terrace. And it's a two-story log cabin, which makes it unusual for the time, for sure. It was built by a man who was a trapper, and he figured if he built a large two-story lovely cabin, he would be able to also trap a lady. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, he, he was looking for a wife. And so he built this beautiful uh, cabin and uh, had four bedrooms, also unheard of in those days. And then he went so far as to advertise for a wife in Vancouver. Um, as you may imagine, women up north were few and far between. And it, well, it, it didn't work. Uh, so this poor man not only did not ever get his wife, but also never married at all and uh just kind of went old and crazy in his cabin and is still there so uh danny and john had a great story about him and i i just thought that was so cool um there's some other stories too about the the founder or the, the man who's seen as sort of the founder of terrace uh george little he and his wife were there. Um, but some history about uh, Terrace, it really was all about lumber originally. I mean, it was all about exploration. Steamboats were really the reason that Terrace got to be where it was. It was right on the Skeena River. Um, 
believe it or not, steamboats were a huge part of British Columbia history. The rivers were really the only way to move up and down the province uh, in the early days. And so um, the steamboat captains were kings. Uh, and actually, there's a good story about one of the steamboat captains in my upcoming book, Vancouver's Most Haunted. Um, we stopped by his house. But um, the steamboats were the ones who really pushed through and got far enough up that um, they could establish a town there. George Little uh, headed up there, really, really liked the area um, and decided he was going to lay claim and just settle there in what later turned out to be the city of Terrace. And that's kind of how it went. So then, as I said, lumber, 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 lumber. That was the big push um, for settling up there. Now, uh, Terrace has uh, got some more things going on. It really serves as a, a hub, a service hub for a lot of northern B.C., um, and also, it's very close to another town. The other town is called uh, Kitimat. Uh, Kitimat is where the major aluminum smelter is. It's a humongous complex. We actually drove out there to look at it. I could not believe the size of it. And it is a major employer um, for up there, for, for up north. So that's what's really going on up in Terrace. Uh, beautiful place. Um, we drove out to the ancient lava beds. I know, lava beds. Who knew? I didn't. Um, Jason remembers going there as a kid and uh, took me out there. And I'm looking going, what? I, I don't understand what? Like, how did I not know about this? Because it is acres and acres and acres of hardened lava and at this point the eruption was around 200 years ago but it's all still there i mean there's a lot of moss on it now but it's huge the the lava fields are massive so that was really really cool um to see that and we just went everywhere we we went to um the uh indigenous reserve where jason's mom is from we saw some amazing things up there, uh, and it was just a really great trip, and I'm, I feel really lucky that I, I got to go. It's embarrassing to say that I have lived in BC for 20 years and honestly had never really ventured out past the normal, which the normal here is like the Okanagan, which is kind of our wine-growing region. Think California, Napa Valley, um, uh, and it was also the major through fair to Calgary, which is where I grew up. So Vancouver, Calgary, Victoria, and the Okanagan was really all I'd seen. So this has been great for me to go and explore up north. Um, there's some pretty neat places up there. There's an entire historical village up there as well, uh, called Barkerville, which has some amazing old buildings and of course, tons of ghost stories. So really cool place. So like I said, it was amazing to be able to have the opportunity to be up there, get to know some people, hang out with Danny and John, uh, and, uh, just learn about what's going on up there. So I hope you enjoy it. You're going to hear from them now, Danny and John and Jason and I, as we sat around and we got Danny to um, tell some stories. He's such a shy guy, as you'll be able to tell from the recording. So it was pretty hard to coax some words out of him. So without further ado, time for story time. All right, it's Ian. It's time for story time, and we are in the deep, dark north of British Columbia. We are uh, currently in Terrace, B.C. Go ahead and Google Street Map that for all of our American friends. Uh, you've had to do that a few times, I'm sure. And I'm here with... Jason. And he's very excited to be up here, because why? Why why, why are you happy to be back? Oh, uh, I used to work up here for a while. Um, you know, I grew up in Prince George, but... Uh, my native heritage is around this area. Uh, Kitwinga is what it's spelt on the map. Uh, Kitwin Cool. But uh, now it's Gitniao, Gitwingach. And uh, my mom lived in Terrace here for a while until she moved in with you and I. We mm -hmm. built the suite. Uh, last year, and a blessing I worked every day. All right, I worked uh, in BC Ferries. Um, I work in their accounting division, but uh, I detached for a summer and worked uh, the Prince Rupert to Haida Gwaii run 
and that was absolutely astonishing. Yeah. The, um, I believe it was Vanity Fair that wrote, it is basically the Galapagos of British Columbia. Yes. And, and basically yes. North America. And quite frankly, if COVID hadn't come, I think that Vanity Fair article would have done wonders for the tourist industry. It's stunning. The yeah. scenery is beautiful. The walks are good. Uh, I worked graves on the vessel. So when we landed in Haida graves? Gwaii. That sounds scary. No, yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah. We, when we landed in Haida Gwaii, about 4.35 o'clock, um, because my shift didn't start till 8 p.m., I could walk off the vessel and just explore the island, and I can't tell you how much, how, how beautiful it is. Good. Um, I'm looking forward to going there. Mm -hmm. um, we're here with two special guests who are you local, are. In, who are local to the area. Indeed we are. Please introduce yourselves and tell us. I am Danny Noons, and I'm the team leader for Ghost Watchers BC. Excellent. Formerly Paranormal North Coast, British Columbia. We oh. wanted to change the name. A little bit more marketable. Right. The, the past name didn't really roll off the tongue, but Ghost Watchers, simple, two words. Absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. Le le leans itself to better merch. Ex there. <laughs> exactly. Better merch, better recognition. <laughs> there you you go. nailed it right there. Hi, I'm John Powell, and I'm co founder of our group. Excellent. All right. No now, worries. you guys have been um, hunting down the ghosts not that long, right? This is kind uh, of a new side of things I had for you? to, you know, check back, and it apparently it's been four and a half years. I thought it had been five, but it's only wow. been four and a half years. Okay. So okay. just around the tail end of 2017. And what do you guys do generally? What's your sort of thing that you go out and do? Do you do investigations or you We primarily just um, get stories from local citizens, and then we just basically go investigate. I like to reiterate with people when they call us paranormal investigators, we're documentarians i have to stress this to people when they think oh you're ghostbusters we have right. never busted a ghost no, i don't no. know anybody who goes home with a proton pack yeah no. <laughs> and is able to bust a ghost i've no. never heard of anybody successfully i could be wrong maybe you're um no no uh, my only experience has been i will never presume to tell exactly. some other energy what to do mm -hmm. what i will do is i will try and help the person who lives in that house okay to be as uh, educated or aware or comfortable right. with whatever's there as well. But I'm not going to go in and go, spirit be gone. Spirit That's be gone, exactly. Because yeah. I don't, I, we have not done in a lot of private residences. I don't want to give people the impression that the house is haunted and there might be some other underlying issue like, say, faulty wiring or you're right. just crazy. Right. There, there is, there's no ghost here. Right. We can, you know, help you with that. Just, um, it's just really a logic based investigation. Right. Like I'm, I was telling you earlier, I'm a comedian. I'm a stand-up comedian by trade. So when right. people see me come to your house, like, is this a joke? Are you trolling me? Yeah. Is this a serious <laughs> investigation? Yes. On my off hours, you know, I'm somebody that local people already think is weird. So if you're going to be seen as weird, this seems like the perfect. You may thing. as well go for it. You might as well go yeah. for it. So. And speaking of the the stories, tell mm -hmm. me, uh, give me your top three interesting places around here. Well, it's good that we're looking at top three, just because we've done more than three investigations. Well, there so you go. If then. you just we're said safe. like you know top three, we only did two. Darn. <laughs> I can only give you two. So top three investigations. Well, being primarily the only paranormal group in this region. Hey, that's helpful. Who are you going to call? Who are you going to call? Who are you going to call? It's just going to be the us. Non so. -ghostbusters. The non Ghostbusters. The non Ghostbusters. <laughs> I'm not busting any ghosts. Hopefully, I don't anger a few people involved in the paranormal field because we've had you know some interesting history of different teams. But yep. uh, three, uh, we're in Terrace, BC right now. I'll give you the stories of the local heritage sites we have investigated. Sure, that'd be great. One we visited earlier today around 4 p.m. was um, the Heritage Park Museum. Right. So for people who don't know the history of Terrace, BC, this particular area was a World War II hospital. Oh wow. Okay. So that back then it was built so World War II hospital. And now what resides there are a lot of turn-of-the-century log cabins. Right. So it seems very stereotypical of paranormal investigations and ghost stuff. Here's the creepy-looking log cabin and yep. whatever energy that seems to not want to go away. That's what we're there to investigate and to confirm or deny what's right. going on there. Right. So we investigated that. Uh, John, you can you know help me remember here. How many years ago has it been now since uh, we've been to that park? At least two to three. It, okay. That sounds about right. About okay. Yeah. Two to three years. And we did it in conjunction with another um, paranormal group in Vancouver. So right. it was the first time the park had ever been, you know, investigated. Oh, cool. And what happened was it was very interesting because, again, we're really new to the field. We don't really know what we're doing. So yeah. it's a lot of just taking a digital core and doing an EVP session. So yeah. if you're fam uh, your uh, listeners not familiar, EVP, electronic voice phenomenon. So it's really basic. You could even have your run-of-the-mill digital recorder. 
you go alone in a room and you feel like a schizophrenic or yeah. a paranoid and you're, you're talking, you don't know anything is there. You're just yeah. asking basic questions yeah. like, what is your name? Can you maybe move something to even just say hello? Yeah. So there's one cabin in particular with some very interesting history. It's called the Tom Conroy Cabin. Okay. I'm guessing a man named Tom Conroy. Maybe very good. There. Thank very you. Good. It also has a nickname of Lonely Tom. Aww. And the reason it has that nickname is because he built this cabin at the turn of the century, hoping to attract a wife. Oh, bad move. That's That was his only selling point to the ladies but- 30 years ago. <laughs> hey, baby, I got a cabin. You want to check it out? So, unfortunately, shock upon shock, nobody, no woman took him up on his offer. I am surprised. So, he became very elderly and very uh, stir-crazy yeah. and died in that cabin. Oh. So, the majority of activity we've been told by interviewing eyewitnesses was in this Tom Conroy cabin. Right. So, what we do is we set up very basic equipment. There's nothing really high-tech. Um, something as basic as a trail cam. Yep. Yeah, sure. You want something with IR. Motion, motion sensor. Exactly. Anything yeah. if it's something you can't see visually with your eye, you want something yeah. that can move in front of a camera will take, you know, rapid shots. Yeah. We did that. IR cameras, a GoPro, which will lead into the rest of the story. What <laughs> happened to my favorite GoPro? Oh, no. Oh, oh yes. Mm. Oh, yes. And we even used a baby monitor. Oh, oh cool. Because cool. it had the night vision. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, 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 infrared. Yeah, yeah. And the, the sad part is... The camera angle just wasn't right for the oh, thing. It's almost, no. it, even with real investigations, just like on TV, yeah. the best yeah. evidence for some of a reason, the camera's not in the right position, yeah. or you just miss what, just, just barely miss what But we yeah. did get a few things. This is the investigation where I really became a believer. I wasn't as much of a skeptic. And okay. the reason why was the EVP session that I conducted as we were leaving, of all things. Right. We've been there for a few hours in the second floor of this cabin. Right. Ooh, two and floors. Just, two, uh, two, two floors and still no wife? No wife. Wow. Oh, wow. That How guy. ugly was poor Tom? His, oh, either Lonely ugly Tom. or those social skills and that hygiene <laughs> is quite lacking. I, Three he, bedrooms. And he's probably listening wow. right now. Yeah. Yeah. He's what probably is. listening right now. Like, I'm going to get you guys. Yeah, go back probably, here. probably. But for... for um, more serious matter. I'm running. I'm doing an EVP session on a an, AC. Oh, okay. and it's just me and Dan. Right. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. had my phone with an audio recorder on. Right. It. And it's on. And you're downstairs. And I I'm was in downstairs. Support. Right. And he gets us EVP. Right. And well, basically, it's um, it's a very intelligent response because we're packing up for the day, frustrated, thinking, ah, oh, we didn't get anything. Yeah. We're gonna pack up yeah. and go. And I literally say out loud, oh, I'm gonna be leaving now. Uh, we didn't get anything, and then when I do playback later, a uh, distinct voice, an uh, old man's voice says, get out. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So. And the reason I said I had my phone recording yeah. is because just in case it was me, yeah. mm-hmm. I played back, right. absolutely nothing. Silence. So Except, you knew it was a third-party voice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, and again, And a couple hours before that, yeah. I had set up Dan's GoPro, but because they only have half an hour or so battery, yeah, yeah. we had it plugged in, and sure. I had strung the cord, yeah. secured the cord. We come upstairs to do our investigation. The camera's not on the, the dresser drawer. What? It's flipped over. Oh, wow. On yeah. the ground. The memory card is ejected. What? Wow. This is a locked-in mechanism. I know. You'd I have know. to yeah, yeah. Have We to have a really GoPro. Yeah, yeah, we're so. using it today. And... If it had just fallen and dragged, yeah, there's no way. There's no way because the the no. objects. I went ar- around the cord with the objects. It would have pulled the objects. Yeah. And this is after Holy another session cow. where I told John and the crew, "Leave me up there alone. I wanted to get this um, ghost to respond to me, right. and it sure did." Well, wow. I, it came back later after the session, and um, the profanities I used because that's my favorite <laughs> GoPro to find out that it's somehow been uh, damaged. Yeah, and on the floor, yeah. but. The thing that the, the big takeaway was the EVP. Yeah. Because it's really difficult. Like, you, you can go for a lot of sessions and, like, get, like, absolutely nothing. But when yeah. you first hear that first EVP and it's an intelligent response to something you said, you weren't even planning. Yeah. It's just out of the blue. Like, hey, I'm packing up for the day. Okay, this again, this uh, guess I didn't get anything. And then you hear, like, an elderly man's voice that relates to the cab and say, get out. Yeah. I guess that's why he didn't get anything. He was not there to entertain you. Uh, no. Um... Certainly not welcoming. The the other thing (laughs) about that is we tried to put the card, the memory card into my computer. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely corrupted. Corrupted. Wow. Like you couldn't even format it and bring it back? No. No. Oh, he was really mad. On top of that, we can hear the cord 
drooping. No. On the GoPro, it's just out of camera. Yeah, yeah. But you can hear it. So. And on the baby monitor. Yeah. And you can hear, sounded like something moving the cord, and all of a sudden it's just dropping on the one side. Oh my gosh. And you can hear it moving on the floor. Oh my gosh. Wow. This field is. And then you so hear weird. the clunk. Yeah. Oh gosh. Wow. And remember, we said we had a uh, baby monitor set up in the corner of the room. It just Miss. misses. I know it sounds cliche that we're faking things, and actually, if you guys had brought a laptop today, I'd already prepared some very compelling footage because one of the hardest things in this field to capture on video is an apparition. Yeah. We've yeah. done it three times. Wow. We've done it three times. Well, we believe. People are feel can feel free to ever look at the footage. We we keep all the raw footage. We're one of these paranormal yeah. teams that say, "You want to debunk us? Go for yeah. it! Mm -hmm. Absolutely, go for it!" Is there somewhere people can go to see that kind of footage? Uh, we're in a rebuilding period right now with okay. the page, so like um, an exodus of certain team members and like the rebranding. But yeah. we are going to re-upload all the footage. Okay, good. We're going to we're going to absolutely all do that. And okay. some and pretty a bit much, of I think we're, the first one we're going to do is a best of. Oh yeah, 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 Just exactly. To get going. That's perfect. So and that would be good. So mm -hmm. um, before we sign off today, yeah, give everybody the website and all that, and we'll do all that. It's just a Facebook page that's Ghost Watchers. You just go to oh, okay. Facebook. Easy. It's so new that I don't remember the exact Facebook address. I yeah. just know that you just type in Ghost Watchers. You get like a purple backdrop okay. with, with the perfect. logo. It should be just fine. Awesome. And the other thing that happened that day. And th this is part of my top three. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we were investigating investigating the Trapper's Cabin doing a spirit box session. Okay, yeah. Right? And how do spirit boxes work for anyone who doesn't know? Um, it's they pick up white noise. Yeah. It's, it's white it noise. It runs so white noise, and if anything happens, we're using a tablet version, which oh, okay. is kind of skeptical, but yeah. before I even leave, I even did it today Yeah. because I did bring my tablet. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I turn off the white... Uh, any Wi-Fi or connections to it before I even right. get right. Very make sure there's no other interference. So like no it's going through like the different FM signals of words. Right. It will come down to what it picks up if it actually relates. Yeah. Right. So we'll yeah. go on, John. That's cool. And I'm just step in. It's a little door. Like, here's the yeah. beam. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. small. Yeah. And it's just a one-man trapper's cabin. Beds right there, heater. Yeah. Mm. Cooking. Not fancy and not designed to attract a woman. No. no. <laughs> Certainly not. Maybe he had better luck than Tom. Maybe he he perhaps he did. It sounds like a place to crash. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I've taken enough stills from the inside, so I was going to take some stills from the outside, right. so I just go to step out, smoke my head on <laughs> oh, the frame. Yeah. Ouch. And then he gets a response, and we listen to it. Mm -hmm. And the response is, that's funny. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. way. Yeah. So it was responding to us, not asking a question. Wow. <laughs> but, but mocking, mocking you. Mocking us. Mocking yeah. me. Yeah. Well, they, that's they nice. So the and spirit yeah, retained I hit hard because I was humor. seeing spots. Oh, no, that's awful. <laughs> yeah, so we were there earlier today. I was actually hoping to bring you guys there, but unfortunately they closed, um, you know, earlier at 6 p.m. today. Yeah. So we're just lining up, like, um, uh, a chance to go back there and, like, do another investigation. Now, another thing I always cool. want to emphasize you really do have to go back to a location numerous, numerous times and right. follow up on the methodology mm -hmm. that you're using right. because in this field in particular, we still don't know what we're doing. I don't think there's anything consistent about how you're communicating, nope. how you actually capture something on camera. Yeah. So the big thing for me is narrowing down a consistent methodology. So if we do go to a location, it's more viable communication, yeah. like more viable visual evidence. So that's the big thing for me because with the teams, our teams I've seen, uh, let's see if I'm gonna annoy some people, but it feels like they just are lazy or they're satisfied with just getting like an EVP. A little excited, but there's no follow up about like how to recreate that in right, the field. Right, 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 right. And and I mean, it depends on what kind of um, thing you're gonna see. Because mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. experience has been there are different kinds of energies. Yeah. Some are very much conscious they are responding to you they are mm -hmm. it's as if they're a person in the room with you yeah and then you've got others that are almost just like a playback a playback a tape it's and energy that is almost like a historical right. energy like a dvd that plays back right right and so my friend dawn who is i remember the term rescue medium okay um she will go in and say are you happy like, do you want to be here? Mm -hmm. And she's run into quite a few who said, no, I want I want to go. Okay. And she has the gifts and abilities to help oh, them okay. send them on their way. Um, others are like, mm -hmm. no, I'm good. 
okay. Like, I like what I'm doing. I like being here. I yeah. like, I like the, this is fun for me. And she's like, okay, cool. You know? Sure. So it's very, I think there's so much room for interpretation and opinions mm-hmm. and yeah. methods and everything else that, you know, I just sort of, yeah, the, what it boils down to for me, because I can remember people saying, oh, I don't know if I believe you or I mm-hmm. don't know if I believe that story or whatever. You know what? I know what I experienced. Exactly. And that's all I can tell you. Exactly. At the end of the day, a person can't just go and discredit someone else because we all have our experiences. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, you know, this led back to me just talking to uh, a person who's listened to the second episode. And I said, you know, realistically, there are billions of people who believe in God, for yes. example, right? Sure. So how is it not possible that if, you know, mm-hmm. you believe in God or some for- form uh, thereof, yeah. that ghosts can or can't exist? And I said, in reality... Uh, I think in regard to physics, you got the past, present, and future that can actually exist simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So is that what we're seeing potentially as apparitions of this expression? You know, it's not out of the realm of ridiculous. Well, and and I've talked before about Mm -hmm. I was raised in a like fundamental Christian, hardcore, Bible thumper kind of home. Okay. And I was experiencing things from the time I was three and a half. Hmm. And I was told that that was wrong, that it was evil, that I was making it up, all yeah. these things. And so you grew up thinking, oh, there's something really wrong with me. But actually, if you look at the Bible, mm-hmm. there is an Old Testament story about uh, one of the kings, I believe it was Saul, conjuring up the witch of Endor, who was dead, mm-hmm. conjured up her spirit to get her to tell him hmm. what the future was. Okay. And then in Psalms, it talks about, um, there's this whole psalm about, um, I will not fear the arrow that flies by day, okay. nor the terror that flies by night. That sounds like Darkwing mm. Duck to me. <laughs> right? <laughs> that sounds right. like Darkwing Duck. The bottom line is, the Bible's talking about it. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. there. It's in there. So let's not all be all, you know. You know, it's just if like. You, if, you if you look into it, every religion does that anyways. And every culture sure. is ghosts. Yeah. Every single culture. Every religion so. is angry with us. No. Whether it's <laughs> angry letters, angry emails, how dare you presume. <laughs> Whether it's even in Viking lore. Yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. Go, uh, the Egyptians. Celtic. Like all Egyptians. of them. It's not just mm-hmm. that it's in today's cultures. It's in all the cultures. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we all worship some sort of being. Well, and I think the biggest thing is uh, for me, and mm-hmm. I know for Jay too, is you do you. Like I'm never well, going to sit here all I do. and yeah. condemn. I do not care. And it, yeah. You do you. <laughs> I can and tell. It's, and it's okay. You know, it's okay. And I'm nope. never going to condemn someone else. As I said earlier, being a comedian, I simply, and that's illegal now, by the way. Comedy is completely illegal. Yeah, <laughs> Something I've said today on this podcast has got to be canceled true. as we speak. And I'm trending. <laughs> but no, um, in the field itself, when we talk to people, eyewitnesses, like in particular, we'll have a dozen eyewitnesses. Right. And 11 of them will say that they've experienced the same thing. Right. You'll have the one guy, the one skeptic who's just loud and boorish and thinks he knows everything. Yeah. And just because of that loud, abrasive personality, he somehow just bullies them into like not believing. Yeah. So he thinks that he'll be able to discount 11 people's experience just because he's the loudest and most obnoxious. Right. And I've seen the whole situation, too, where someone will say, uh, you know, they'll both have uh, be in the same place, for example. Mm-hmm. And then one of them will say to the other one, hey, did you uh, did you think that was kind of did you think something mm-hmm. kind of weird happened there? And the other person will be like, no, why would you say that? And then, of course, that first person then goes, oh, you're right. I, I it was just my imagination. And then it just cancels out the or validation delves into a ghost <laughs> adventures type thing. Well, whoa, bro. Did yeah, you hear yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want everything to be cliche, but then you, you know, one thing that stood out when I listened to your podcast was a mention of the, the scratching, like the actual visual appearance of scratches. Yeah. I always wonder, I ask myself for like ghosts, do, they, do you not trim your nails in the afterlife? <laughs> Is that the only thing that's a physical reaction that you can just clod people like Maybe. some sort of invisible Freddy Krueger? Maybe. I, I don't Maybe know. they have some nail scissors they use. I don't know. I, don't, that's a, I know a few people have had bite marks too. Ooh, kinky, wow. you know, right? <laughs> I know. And, I would love that. And they feel a stinging, and they yeah. look, and there's like an actual toothbrush. As scary as that can be, I would actually love it. It hasn't happened to me. John has been scratched. I have yet to be scratched. You see, I'm good. I, I got I touched and scratched. No, oh, see, I don't gosh. want any of that. A- no, and I'm the good. weird part was the scratch was on my neck. Yeah. The touch was on my spine. It felt like somebody came in uh, yeah. and just grabbed your spine. Yeah, and I've heard I, I went down right now. That was an investigation I wasn't wow. part of that day, but um, I have had experiences to feel the presence of ghosts in different areas, but w- I have not been bit, so I have not been okay. scratched, but okay. as far as, like, I wouldn't mind, because I'm one of those people, like, the more evidence and the more I can, you know, 
lo- delve into and learn about, of course, yeah. I, I will just be open to almost anything. Yeah. So, yeah. so that was number one. The okay, no, okay. Uh, the there's park. still one other thing there. Oh, okay. My okay. favorite part is when somebody gets frustrated, you get evidence by accident. Oh, well, like you did with the whole... Yeah. Oh, fine, I'm leaving. It, it delves into parapsychology yeah. as well. Your emotional state could be affect the energy also in an area as well, so I'm trying to look more into that. Right. I found with certain investigations, if I'm more sad or more angry, it definitely has like an effect in the energy in the area itself. So that makes sense. That's, again, something... Kind of go- mirrors whatever energy is there. Exactly, so it's another part of the methodology of I'm trying to like understand, so if I do go to a location, is my emotional state going to have an effect, and I'm like documenting this and trying to figure out how you can begin. But you want the second story. It's yes. in Terrace. It's actually not too far from here. Excellent. It's called the George Little House, and it's named after the founder of Terrace, BC. Whose name oh, is wow. perhaps George Little? Oh, I know. I it's know. Stuart Little. No. <laughs> it's, it's, it's George <laughs> Little. It's actually George Terrace Little. Terrace was founded by a tiny mouse, a very well-dressed tiny mouse. That's going to go over well because I ran for mayor of this community. You've got to tell him about I'll that. I'll tell that story later. But, um, <laughs> anyway. So the, the founder, so they wanted like you know uh, an attraction for the downtown area, so they moved like the founder's home to the downtown core here. Right. In fact, maybe we'll even show you later. So That'd be great. And of I course. It's actually just down this road right here. Oh, perfect. And as was what's typical, I paranormal think. investigations, it's a historical building nope, so that one. historical energy right so there's a basement in the basement they've had a lot of first nations carvers and artists doing work down there and some have passed away and according to eyewitnesses at the home they believe some of those artists are still down there oh wow, wow. and they're still doing their work right we've conducted sessions down there evp uh smattering some a few responses but nothing too consistent right when we actually went inside the house that's when things got interesting. So like, again, it's it's everything seems to happen on the second floor, and that's where I got this evidence. Okay, second uh, floor as in upper level. Yeah, upper okay. level. Yeah, yeah, of course. Main level and second level. Okay, yeah. perfect, and perfect. Then, uh, yeah, basement. and then the basement. Because okay. that's a lot of where the historical items that retain the energy are, especially like um, a rocking chair that belonged to George Little's wife Clara. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. The more interesting thing that happened was an EVP that I got in one of the rooms that actually I asked, "What is your name?" and it lo and behold it says Clara. Wow. We got the name of... Uh, That's gr- cool. Very cool. Very cool yeah. indeed. Uh, another team with us, they claimed that they got a photo of someone in the the down, in the downstairs lobby sitting on a bench and wearing First Nations regalia. Right. Which would lead into the basement and yes. the First Nations artists. Yeah. So we've tried to re- recreate that so far. We haven't. We've got, again, a smattering of responses. Nothing really consistent, but... That would probably be our second story here just because of the EVP of the, of the guy's wife. Yeah. Nothing actually like visual other than maybe the potential photo, but yeah. it's something again in the future that I hope to go back and, you know, we've only been there about two times. Now, is that the kind of place where people could go and tour through? Or Absolutely. Is, oh, okay, Absolutely. Cool. So it's open to the public. Heritage Park, as I mentioned earlier, George yeah. Hill House, it's all about tourism and nice. what we find of the paranormal. The historical sites retain the energy and the guys who just don't seem to want to leave. Yeah, that makes <laughs> they sense. They do not want to leave. Yeah. So those are two stories here in Kitimat. Cool. I, I can tell you, like, we have so many. I'll give you, can I sneak in one and a half? Okay. One and a half, okay. <laughs> All right. Our outside of terror, so we've gone to Prince Rupert. Okay. So that's mm-hmm. probably the site of our probably our most famous investigation. Now, Prince Rupert, for mm-hmm. everyone at home, okay. um, is right on the coast. Mm-hmm. And it is where, Jason? Where does, where, what's significant about Prince Rupert for what you did? Uh, it's the home of BC Ferries. Uh. They, they had north-south and east-west. So it's a, it's a nice hub. And they used to have the Alaska Highway Ferry there as well. I'm not. I think that's been shut down for a while, um, but it is the last sort of town, village, before, city, mm-hmm. before the Pacific Ocean, and that's then you have cool. you know the Haida yeah. Gwaii, and and it's a major shipping route. So it's a big mm-hmm. gateway kind of community. It, it is. Go. Yeah, right. yeah. It's got a lot of uh, a lot of big shipments uh, mm-hmm. from China that come through, and then yeah. off off through the CN. I didn't know that. Yeah, same with Kitimat. So you're in Prince Rupert? So in Prince Rupert, just we're on the outskirts of Prince Rupert, actually, and that's where we are led to what existed there in 1941, the Miller Bay Indian Hospital, which okay. housed tuberculosis patients in oh. 1941. Oh, oh, my God. You've got, like, 
the perfect recipe for a ghost. It's just the foundation and a stairwell that leads underground. It's like something out of a horror movie. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm 100% serious. And the stairwell still goes somewhere underground? Oh, no. It's where the um, the laundry oh. facilities of the hospital used to be. Uh-huh. That's where we've gone down to. John? Technically, it's kind of downstairs, but in a half a side of a hill right. kind of thing. So oh, not creepy You can still see outside. It can be creepy. Oh, yeah, no, it would be. Um, <laughs> you descend into down those stairs. It feels creepy. It was yeah. unique. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it be, uh, in the last decade or so, people have used it as a paintball site, right? Of course. And it's spray painted to all hell. I don't know why people right. feel the need to go to different you know sites that are spooky and just spray uh, paint the hell out of them, but I they, they do. I know. Wow. Man, this one room. Nothing but technical issues. Now, talk me through that because it's just the foundations, mm-hmm. but the foundations for each room are still there. No, just the laundry facility. Oh, okay. Just that's the laundry, laundry facility, facility, facility that's underground. basement. Okay, that's still and, standing. and the smokestack. Remember, there's, uh, there's still the the big incinerator. Right. Oh, yeah. Brick incinerator, not steel. Now, this is for TB patients, but mostly just for First Nations TB yes. patients. Yes. Oh, no. So First it must Nations. have been awful then. Um, I, I'm not going to assume or like uh, speculate, but... Um, Given it, our government's record uh, <laughs> treating First Nations people, it sounds I'm going to guess it wasn't awesome. Uh, no, but, you know, we were pointed out to this area. We descend down the stairs, and that's when we set up equipment like, again, an IR camera to like film if it's in dark areas. What's written on the walls, like, they can see you or I'm looking at you. So it's, <laughs> That's not creepy at all. So... Another thing I should mention, when I go into these locations, obviously, the first thing you want to do is do research. And the first thing you want to do is go to your local library, wherever the local newspapers are archived. And you're going to go through a lot of material as best you can and try to figure and piece together what's going on there. Yeah. The old microfish. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So that's that's a lot of research, a lot of painstaking to figure out what is the story behind what's going on here. So we descend down those stairs, it's very creepy, dark rooms, and you only have like a small idea of what the historical significance is. And what happened, I, I, we're again another EVP session in one room in particular, and what I'm feeling are two cold spots next to me, about yay each side here. Right, right, quite low down. Right low down, just right here. So I'm right. a short guy already, but about like size of children. Right. When we do the research, we find out like um, a lot of children have been reported, like people have gone there themselves, reported feeling or seeing children, yay high. Oh, no. That their spirits so are there. Child TB ghosts. I, you know, my research tells me that they claim that nobody actually died on site. Oh, come on. I don't, I'm not That's... gonna presume anything. When I talk to witnesses, you know, I'm not gonna speculate. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna trust what's said. No, you can only go with what the research is. But exactly. Just, they yeah. just disappeared. Yeah, they just oh, they I, moved. Uh, they went home. Yeah, that's but it. They went uh, home. another b- a bit of significant evidence is what we captured on John's FLIR, so a FLIR camera, so to measure the heat and the cold. So oh, okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, uh, I'm talking to one member yeah. who's no longer with us. Right. Uh, can you take a picture right there, and I'll take a, a snapshot from with my FLIR. Right. Yeah. And I tried to compare the two. Right. Yeah. I can't explain this cold figure. Oh. Wow. So like you took a picture and there's nothing there, but when you took it with the heat cold camera, there was something. Yeah, and oh I just no. wanted to, I because there's yeah, but, spray paint figures and whatnot there, right? And I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't the spray paint. Right. Uh, or but, anything wow. else picked up. Yeah. Wow. That would be creepy. On top of, there's an old, I think it's an old dryer in, yeah. the, in the laundry room. Right. And you got to be careful in that area. It's always full of water right 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 like in one corner and it's stuff is falling down so yeah. you kind of look up see where you can wa- safely walk mm-hmm. i don't know how long much longer that building is going to be safe to walk into yeah but yeah the stairs are a little sketchy as it is yeah mm-hmm. but if there's a trail around the side you can actually walk around and walk in oh wow downstairs so right it's, yeah you, you, you can take the one way or you can take the safer route right yeah yeah um so we're in there and out of the corner of my eye, as I'm, fil- I'm filming Dan and our other teammate, camera dies out. And I'm trying to figure out the camera right. and get it going again. Right. And I see the I see this beat up dryer, washer, whatever it is, right. vibrating. Okay. Uh, that's not... And I'm like, 
And I'm looking around for something else that's shaking. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, know we're yeah, in yeah. the ring of yeah, fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I want to rule it out. Yeah. There's no movement in the Nothing water. Nothing else is shaking. Gosh. Like, we got so. a huge puddle. And that's when uh, Ian Aside from away. drips. Yeah. Not, and no excessive vibrating because yeah. you would see it on the water mm-hmm. this is what if i was there this is what you'd hear i'll see you at the car oh not me yeah. I, yeah. Like, I i that's and just right up my by alley. the time we got a camera on it it stopped wow mm-hmm. i think they do that on purpose of course I, I don't know if their energy then that's another part of the methodology if their energy then they need an energy source to right to you know, we right. went through in that room four cameras whoa mm. so something was sucking the energy out of it yeah and that included me swapping out batteries on my still cam. Holy Cliche, ass. but it happens. Well, it's a cliche for a reason. I yeah. mean, this is not unheard of. I mean, um, I've had, a, a, well, Andrea, who we had on episode two, um, has a uh, all-girl ghost investigation group. And the same thing. Yeah. Um, the batteries and their equipment just drain because they need a power source. Yes. And if there isn't electricity in exactly. the building or, or whatever, you know, something easily accessible, they're going to pull it from what they can pull. And remember. So, and, it, and it wasn't just that. Mm-hmm. I'll give you. I, I'll, I'll I started. Let, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jason. Oh, I was going to say um, my experience with disappearing photos on digital equipment was I was living in my house alone at the time. And I had my two cats and uh, Prince and Ray. And for the first time ever, they stayed at the very top of the stairs. Now, Ian can, can attest to this yeah. because mm-hmm. I showed him the photos. He sent them to me. I sent them to him. Yeah. yeah. The The first thing was that the cats were acting weird. The, what happened was I was purging some stuff out of the house because basically I just had the house completely rebuilt, top to bottom, start to finish. It looks, it looks tremendous now, but... This old fireplace grate, because now I have a natural gas insert, and the tools, the related tools that were they, owned by the old guy. They came with the uh, house. Yeah, yeah, they came with the house. They were stunning, beautiful, because it's a big central fireplace. It looks stunning. But since I have natural gas insert, I don't need this fancy grate and these fancy tools, so I put them by the curb. Anyways, I'm, I'm talking to a friend uh, in the States, uh, long distance, and I could just feel my chest hmm. getting pressed upon. And I, and I start looking around the room, this is about 9, 30, 10 p.m. at night, and I just had a look of horror because over the, over the course of our hour-long discussion, I noticed that the lights, they were still emitting light in the room, but the room was getting ultra dark. Ooh, now, I took the photos like, yeah. to show Ian with my camera, it's on a Google phone, which backs up, as we know. Yeah, it yeah, backs yeah. up, it backs up yeah. all the time. It just backs up my phone. And I had it on my phone. Okay. Yes. And so, I said to him, so that's when mm. I said to him, because he sent me a series of pictures as the darkness is getting lower and lower and lower. You could, you could I see ran out of the house. And I said, what did you do? What did you change? And he goes, well, I got rid of that stupid, you know, the fireplace tools. And I went, you need to get It was them based back. off of actually Ian's recommendation. Ooh, He's like, you should get rid of those because they don't, they look so out of place with the But then I'm like, you need house. to get them back now. Because the guy that I heard rumors that the guy that died before I bought the house. So he passed away and his wife and son were living there. But apparently he wasn't very friendly with the kids. Anyways, long story short, I got rid of these tools. I took the photographs and you could see over the, about the 10 minutes that I took these stills, the room was becoming so dark that yeah. the three lamps were still completely illuminated and all you could see was a bright light just above them. The rest of it, you couldn't even see across the room anymore. So he did get the tools back. Mm-hmm. He brought them back in. And within 15 minutes? Yeah, then the lights are back, and, and I didn't feel that weird pressure on my chest. Normal. I left yeah. the house. And here the boys are, and I showed Ian the picture, because yeah. he knew the mm-hmm. boys. They were always wandering about the house doing their thing. Mm-hmm. He has never seen them perpetually stuck at the top of the stairs, Staring. just looking into the living room. And I left the house. I'm like, yeah, I, yeah. this is me. I, I got to get out of here. I'm not. I'm freaked right out. Anyways, long story short. Okay. The pictures completely disappeared. They're gone. They're not. They're not they're my not Google the backups, Drive anymore. They're no. not on the phone. They're, they're gone. completely gone. I have there like the exact, well, similar, but it's interesting transition because you gave me like another leeway for another story, and this right. is the last one I'll tell you. Right, right. <laughs> you talked about um, darkening. I'm going to talk about a room that was completely dark and lit up Whoa. on its own. Oh wow. Whoa. Okay. So this is the story. This happened in Kitimat. I was invited to a private home to investigate. They had assumed that there was activity and they were correct. 
It would happen consistently at 3 in the morning. Oh, okay. Consistently at 3 in the morning. So that's, again, cliche of a devil. I word. know. I've heard not good <laughs> things about three, three yeah. morning, Okay, yeah. so I take, again, I'm, I do this alone. There's somebody in the house with me. I'm yeah. all alone. I have the IR. I have the night vision camera set up. So what I'm seeing is orbs. You know, not just, like, the dust that shows up, like, typical. That can be debunked. Right, right. These are emitting light. And they are spiraling in the ways you, you could even imagine. They're that. emitting light. They're emitting light. Oh, okay. And on top of that, this is winter time. Oh, my it's God. It's winter. So, so they're it, not bugs. <laughs> Just for everyone out there who does not live in a sub-zero climate, mm -hmm. uh, winter time up here means yes. something. What would you say the usual temperatures in the winter up here? Sean, you, you feel this um, <laughs> This is not my... It can range from zero to up to minus 20. Yeah. So why am I living or here? Even more <laughs> yeah, yeah. So why am I living to here? To help me use a hairdryer to melt the gas Exactly. The yeah. So yeah, it yeah. was in winter when I conducted this investigation. So right. I'm seeing these orbs emitting light. So I know an IR camera, these aren't specks of dust that I'm picking up. These are something very real. But and it wasn't, it wasn't um, just a reflection kind of right. emitting. It was like a, a tiny little flashlight turning on and then off. Wow. And blinking. But wow. the room, like I said, I'm, it's completely mm -hmm. dark. I, like, I'm running the arc Kind of like a firefly. But, but what happens is, this is probably the thing that scared me the most in the investiga investigation. Probably the most compelling evidence we've ever captured on camera. I am certain that we have an apparition on camera because what happens is, I'm asking a ghost to appear. The entire room lights up. It's not, it's not from a light oh. bulb or anything. No. I don't know where this light source comes from. Yeah, it yeah. lights up. When I go back to review the footage on my camera and we slow it down, what we see is, a beam of light yeah. comes from one side of the room, raises up into a humanoid form, exits out. What? And if you guys had a laptop here, if we forgot oh brought our computer, we could show you probably the most compelling evidence for an apparition that probably... That is crazy. And, and the only regret is there wasn't a second camera running. Right, oh. right, right, right. But right, right. I would dare anybody but, to debunk what we have yeah. visually. It's funny you say that because I've heard of the stories where people... Um, go to these abandoned houses that have mm -hmm. no electricity to them and there's lights on in certain rooms. You know, things like mm -hmm. that. Like weird light anomalies. So I, yeah, totally. But again, there's no lights on. There's no. No, it's not like a light fixture. This is a mist, like an energy mist that goes from one side, if, if we had footage, scrolls along, raises up into a humanoid form, exits out. And in the wow. span of less than 10 seconds. That, that lights up an entire room. So wow. I, it's nothing I've ever heard from anybody else. I've yeah. heard, you always hear about like apparitions, and but to light up an entire dark room on its own yeah. and, then, and have it captured. And that'll be, again, footage that we will be reposting, even on my YouTube channel as well, which is a comedy channel, by the mm -hmm. way. But, you know. And where is that? What's that one called? It's Dare to be Stupid Show. So all you do is you <laughs> go to the YouTube search, you and type you in, in Dare to be Stupid Show. And there you are. And there I am because <laughs> my history before I became a paranormal investigator five years ago or a documentarian, I was a comedian and I have the most wackiest history. We could political runs, wacky political runs, cable access shows, awards. It's that's awesome. Uh, it's just wild life. But you know what? That just makes life way more interesting. Exactly, because we're in a region where, especially in Kitimat, you're at the end of the road. Yeah. Yeah, so you're yeah. going to get stir crazy. You're going to yeah. get bored and you're going to need something to do. <laughs> and if they already think you're weird, then it makes sense to either look for ghosts or what I did in 2019, which is run for mayor of Kitimat Terrace at the same time. Nice. All dressed as a Kool-Aid man. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, whatever's going to whatever's going to get those votes. You know, I dropped out at the last second because oh. <laughs> I was worried I was actually going to win. Oh, no. I was worried I was going to actually win. He here had that much traction. For newspapers all over vote. Canada, oh even gosh. in the States. Two, but hilarious. two years later, and you know, reflecting on what's going on and the, and the COVID outbreak, I think I made the wise decision. I think you probably, I did. probably did. So, all right, all right. well, we're going to go out with these guys mm -hmm. and get some pictures of a couple of these places right now, I'm so that we'll ready. have those up for you. Uh, people who are in our buy me a coffee group, five bucks and up a month, you're going to get the inside window on the episode oh, so right. you'll be seeing those Get pictures those very exciting mm -hmm. we'll pick one interesting picture as our um episode pick but if you want to see more you know where to go um jason talked a little bit about our house when he talked that that um fireplace story we're going to do a whole episode on our mm -hmm. house because it's crazy 
yeah, my my experiences with, are with rooms that go dark, yeah. as opposed to going light. Yeah, just like what happened at Killarney Drive yeah. and Prince George, and, and we're going to talk about that house yeah, too, yeah, but on a different episode, one hundred percent. But yeah, so uh, thank you guys for coming. Yeah. We're yeah. really Did I get it one last plug for the YouTube Please. and the Facebook. Absolutely. Uh, all right, for anybody listening again, so the Facebook is Ghost Watchers. Just go to the Facebook search and type Ghost Watchers. If you're on YouTube, just go to YouTube search and type in Dare to Be Stupid Show. It's all one word, and you'll find my YouTube channel. And it is a very successful channel, I might add. Almost 300 subscribers and 200 million video views after 400 videos after the last That's couple awesome. of years. It's That's amazing. I'm That's a wacky fantastic. guy, what can yeah. I tell you? <laughs> That's fantastic. And it's so great when you do something and then it just kind of runs off into the distance and you're the like, The paycheck okay, is bye. also very nice. I was going to say <laughs> that. YouTube okay. money. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. thanks, guys, for being with us. No and uh, looking forward to heading out and looking at some Absolutely. of these places. And we'll talk to you next time. Talk to you next time. My goodness that was a good time i have to tell you we had so much fun doing that um danny and john could not have been nicer uh walter joining us as well and they literally spent the rest of their night with us i mean we met them at like four o'clock and and we did not say goodbye until around 10 so they were generous with their time generous with their stories and uh definitely go to their facebook page and check them out i'm gonna put the link up and i'll mention it at the end in the meantime uh we have that great video that Alex did. I got great feedback on that. People were pretty excited about that. Uh, he's done another one. Um, this one's based on our first episode of Helm Alley, and that one's going to be up on our YouTube channel by the time you hear this. Uh, definitely check it out. He He's good. I mean, the guy is good. Uh, he has his own channel there as well, and you can catch that in the... Uh, in the uh, description, I'll make sure I put that in, and it'll also, of course, be on the video. But yeah, he's he's very talented, and we're really, really thrilled that he has come to sort of interpret that side of things for us. City of Victoria, great place to uh, have history, study history, learn about history. And when you sprinkle on some ghosts, it just makes it like salt on a burger. You know what I mean? Like, just a little nicer. I want to thank everybody again for your uh, uh, contributions, uh, sending in emails, uh, letting us know how you feel about the podcast. Please keep that up. We'd love to hear from you. Ghostsandbears at gmail.com. Uh, please do the whole rate and review us on iTunes thing. Um, it does nothing but do more good for this podcast, and it's what's going to keep us going. Um, please keep in mind about... Uh, our buy me a coffee site, which has been great, and uh, we've really appreciated all the people who've come out and helped us on there. Uh, big thank you to our our newest people, Carolyn. Uh, thank you for your kindness there, and Carla as well. We are so grateful to to everybody who's contributed. Um, but thank you for signing on as as new friends. I will just fill you in real quick because I realize I haven't really done that. Um, we have different levels. Bear Admirer, that's three bucks a month. Um, and that's going to get you a shout out for your new members. It supports us, which is amazing. And we're really glad to have you around. Um, Pet the Bears, that's $5 a month. Um, and for that, you get the previous things. But you also are going to get uh, a behind the scenes picture montage of what's going on and and uh and what's happening and and sort of a, a better window on the episode we have for 10 bucks a month ghost bear member of the sacred cave doesn't that sound good um and with that you get everything you get at the other levels but you also get to jump on our group zoom call that happens once a month and we're pretty excited about that um that's been really fun to do and just get to know you guys because again it's about growing that community so we all jump on there and talk to each other and it's been a lot of fun and we also have for 15 dollars a month bear appreciation club Yes, you can appreciate the bears. You get everything I mentioned before, and you're going to get a one-on-one -on -one chat with me, and we can talk about 
pretty much whatever you want. Um, I have few boundaries, really. Some would say it's a problem, but um, I'm happy to talk to you about whatever you want to talk about. Ghost stuff, history stuff, whatever. I, I don't care. I, I'll provide one-on-one -on -one counseling. I don't care. Uh, and for the $20 a month, it's called Bear Worship. I know. It's so great. I had so much fun making these up. And thanks again to Arwen who, who helped me come up with the different things we wanted to do. For 20 bucks a month, you're going to get a signed copy of my book after three months um, uh, of Victoria's Most Haunted. And you're going to get also high quality photos from both of my books. Um, one were taken by one set taken by Ray Shipka. And then for the new book, those are all taken by Jason. So that's kind of cool. And we'll be sending you those. Um, and if you stick around even longer um, after October, then you're also going to get a signed copy of the latest book. So that's kind of cool so we want to thank everyone who's jumped on the buy me a coffee and it is just buymeacoffee.com backslash ghosts and bears so check it out see if there's something that catches your eye um we would sure appreciate the support and we're we're grateful for it keep in mind when you're looking for fun things there's uh always facebook we've got our ghosts and bears page on there and also danny has his um ghost watcher um, Facebook page and it's just at Facebook and then you're going to type in paranormal BC and you're going to get uh, Danny's uh, ghost watcher page and again I'm also going to post his uh, other link which is a comedy link where Danny makes most of his multi multi millions of dollars as a YouTube personality okay I may be overstating that but you know what I mean he, he does really well and it's it's really cool to see that he's got this whole other side going on I think that's amazing so again, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for being part of our uh, proud but humble um, uh, community as we figure out this podcast thing together. I'm really grateful. It's it's still fun, so that's a good thing. Um, this next episode coming up, uh, we're actually it's going to be kind of a two parter. We're going to spread it out over two weeks. We're going to be doing um, Fort Rod Hill, which is our one and only uh, historical military park here in Victoria. And we're also going to be doing Fisgard Lighthouse, which was one of the first lights in the West. Um, and both of them, holy cats, uh, definitely have their own stories to tell. We're going to bring Andrea back for those because she was so great with Helmkin House. She does not disappoint. Uh, so we had a lot of fun recording with Andrea. And I believe we're even going to go back there again uh, to shoot the promo video uh, with Alex. He He's like, I want to get you guys on camera. And I'm like, <laughs> you don't know what you're asking, buddy. Like, nobody wants that. But no, Alex is, is, is pushing pretty hard that... Uh, we get on there and do this. So it looks like it's going to happen. So check that out. Uh, see what you think. And please, again, I want to hear feedback. What do you like? What are you hating? What's annoying you? Hopefully it's not me. Um, and, and we can keep building this together. Thank you again for being here. Uh, thanks for being part of this. And uh, I hope you have an amazing week or day or whatever you're doing. And the next time you're wandering around, remember... We've got the actual ghost stories with the actual history in the actual place. And hopefully one day that place will be with you. Take care. Bye.